Hello everyone and welcome to a game that ended very abruptly from round 8 uh, of the FIDE Grand Swiss currently being played. Uh, it's Sandro Mareco of Argentina, uh, Grandmaster versus Jeffrey Xiong and um, uh, well, it, it happens to all of us and obviously it can happen to a very strong Grandmaster. The game lasted only 14 moves and uh, creating the interface for this game took longer than actually making the video for this game. Uh, so let's check it out uh, and hopefully it doesn't happen to you. So Sandro opens with d4. We have pawn to d5, c4 and d captures on c4. Okay, the queen's gambit accepted is on the board. Knight f3 and now pawn to a6. Knight to f6 is the main move to uh, counter it. a6 is the second most popular. We have e3 and now knight to f6. Uh, guarding with b5 will run into the usual a4, b5, the challenging of the pawn chain. So after e3, knight f6. Uh, uh, we have bishop captures on c4 and now pawn to e6. All right, all very standard stuff. We have castle c5 and now pawn to b3. This is like the sixth most popular continuation. Capturing on c5 is the main move. So b3 and knight b to d7. We have bishop to b2 and now bishop to e7. Uh, bishop goes back to e2 and now we have castles. Knight b to d2 uh, and now pawn to b6. Preparing to fianchetto the light square bishop. Knight to e5 and bishop to b7. And this is where the magic happens. Bishop to f3, of course, countering the strong light square bishop, and queen to c7, nicely defending it. And it is now, uh, as of move 12, already that we have a completely new game. So, uh, move 12, completely new game, move 14, game over. Uh, here, uh, rook to c1 was played. Uh, nicely aligning the rook with the black queen and here black played knight captures on e5 and you have only one good response to knight captures on e5 and that is to capture the knight on e5 with the pawn d captures on e5 is the move you should play and after the knight moves then you continue with something like a3 you stop knight to b4 then rook comes to d8 and maybe uh, aligns itself with the queen queen to e2 and so on the game continues uh, but after knight captures on e5 bishop captures on b7 was played and here sandro uh, obviously mixed up his lines or, or maybe it was just uh, an oversight but uh, it is uh, here that you have a completely winning position if you find what went wrong so feel free to pause the video and solve the position for black or if you've seen the thumbnail you can also use that from your your you know uh, storage in your mind uh, so yeah, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on winning the bishop. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight e to g4. That's the move. Of course, you get the knight out of harm's way and there's no defense. You're either checkmating black on h2, a white on h2, or you are winning the free bishop on b7. There's no way to stop checkmate. You play g3 or f4, uh, doesn't really matter. You just queen captures bishop and now uh, white is up a full piece. Uh, white has a bishop and a knight, black has a bishop and two knights. And some of you who are maybe new to chess um, might be thinking well why did he resign he's only down one piece maybe he wins it back I mean if he if he lost maybe he wins it back and while that is a fair question uh, usually in in uh, top grandmaster games you don't just uh, blunder a piece and then win it back although I will remind everyone of the game uh, Magnus Carlsen versus Gawain Jones from the Isle of Man tournament I believe it was 2017 uh, where Magnus actually blundered a piece in a classical game continued playing and won the game uh, but that is that is Magnus Carlsen we're talking about uh, and um, not, not everyone is willing to commit like four hours of their time playing a, a classical game being a piece down but if you haven't seen that game uh, will be the first link in the description below so do check it out I mean it's quite it, it's quite nice uh, so yeah uh, it can happen to everyone even a 2600 Grandmaster so next time it happens to you don't be too hard on yourself but um, uh, it's uh, very good for Jeffrey Xiong because this is his first victory of the tournament he started out very strongly with five draws against five very strong grandmasters then he lost the game then he drew another one and this is now his first win so maybe as there are three more rounds um, to be played in the tournament maybe uh, he, he gets some more wins would be would be very nice for him uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it tough luck for for Sandro Mareko but uh, hopefully we will all learn from this and not make the same mistake uh, as he did uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Stephen McCann, uh, Chess Beats League, Roman Manini, Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm, and Marvin Sparrow for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. I thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on everything that's happening in the chess world, uh, but also covering this tournament until it ends. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and do check out Magnus's game in the link in the description below. Uh, see you soon.